Our today marks the 51st anniversary of Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court decision that granted women a constitutional right to an abortion. The landmark ruling was overturned in 2022, and now the Biden-Harris campaign is making abortion rights a key issue in its re-election effort. Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Wisconsin today, a key battleground state to urge for more reproductive freedom. Wisconsin essentially banned abortions for about 15 months after Roe was struck down, reverting to a law written in 1849. But in an ongoing court case, a judge ruled over the summer that law did not apply to abortions. The ruling will likely be appealed to the state's Supreme Court. On Friday, Wisconsin Republicans introduced a bill that would call for a statewide referendum on whether abortion should be banned after 14 weeks. But Wisconsin's Democratic governor, Tony Evers, is almost certain to veto the measure. Joining us now with more on the critical abortion rights cases and ballot measures across the country, Morning Joe reporter Daniela Pierre Bravo. Daniela. Good morning, Mika. Well, there are several anticipated court rulings this year that could have an impact on current and future abortion access. First are the cases to watch from the Supreme Court. A decision is expected this summer on whether to restrict access to the abortion medication Mifepristone. It started with a lawsuit in Texas where anti-abortion groups sued the FDA seeking to strip the abortion pill of one of its government approvals. The medication accounts for half of all U.S. abortion and is used in the management of miscarriages. The second big Supreme Court case we're watching is whether Idaho's abortion ban violates the federal protection law called EMTALA. The law gives doctors and hospitals that receive federal funding the ability to perform abortions in emergency situations that require stabilizing a patient. And earlier this month, the Supreme Court ruled that Idaho is allowed to enforce its abortion ban even in medical emergencies while the legal case plays out. Then there are abortion cases playing out in different states, seeking clarity around the language of exceptions to abortion bans. Two of the most consequential are those being brought about by pregnant women and doctors in the states of Texas and Idaho. Both states have near total abortion bans. Doctors there have cited confusion on how to handle cases of complicated pregnancies, fearing those harsh penalties that they could risk uh, suffering. I spoke with the president of the Center of Reproductive Rights, the group representing the women and doctors suing those states. The state of Texas keeps fighting us on the simple request that we have, which is that women with obstetric emergencies can get access to abortion care when that is what's necessary to save their life and health and future fertility. And many people follow the case of Kate Cox in December, she stood up while she was pregnant, while she had a devastating uh, diagnosis about uh, the state of her pregnancy. And Texas fought her every step of the way and said, no, she shouldn't get to have an abortion that would be so critical to her health and future fertility. She wants to have more children. She had to leave the state. And finally, Mika, there are the ballot measures to protect abortion access in state constitutions. So, so far, those measures have passed in every state where they've been on the ballot. And next month, of course, Florida's state Supreme Court will hear arguments on whether to remove a similar ballot measure um, after it was challenged by the state's Republican uh, Attorney General, Mika. It's just hard to believe that this is where we are. Daniela Pierre Bravo, thank you very much for that report. We appreciate it.